Grace and peace to you, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Welcome back to the Oak Tree Journeys. I'm Mandy Oaks, and this is my journey. Today, we are continuing the Encyclopedia Challenge. What is the Encyclopedia Challenge? Well, if you're just joining us, the Encyclopedia Challenge is where I read entries from two separate encyclopedias, the New Imperial Encyclopedia and Dictionary from 1909, and the Encyclopedia Americana from 1956. You don't have to read along. This is not a read-along challenge. Uh, this is mostly just to fulfill um, an audiobook um, issue that I discovered whenever I wanted to get into reading the encyclopedias. But if you want to challenge yourself, if you have a set of encyclopedias or access to a set of encyclopedias and you want to read along, by all means, go ahead. Um, and you'll notice the 1909 Ver, uh, encyclopedia and dictionary does not have a lot of entries that other encyclopedias have. In fact, I was just comparing um, the 1909 to the 1956, and I noticed that there are a lot of entries um, in the 1956 one uh, that we're, we're end ending up skipping because the 1909 doesn't have. But I will try to go back and forth, and in fact, there is an entry I may uh, start off with. Uh, that will go back and forth. Um, but this is just something for you to listen to and follow along only if you want to, if you're interested in words um, and you want to know more about something, then by all means, jump in there and, and look it up. Um, if you need me to spell something, uh, let me know in the comments below. I know I'm not the best person to read out loud. I'm usually, usually reading silently because I love books. Um, but I'm going to do my best, and if I stumble over a word, apologize ahead of time. Uh, we can giggle about it. That's cool. Uh, but without further ado, I want to get further along today than we did yesterday. Uh, so let's go ahead and begin with the word uh, that we stopped at. And that's actually a person's name. In the 1909 Encyclopedia and Dictionary, it's listed as Ali Pasha. But in the 1956 Dictionary... It's listed as Ali Mehmet. Um, so that, that's an interesting thing. Um, so let's go ahead and read the New Imperial Encyclopedia and Dictionary from 1909. So we'll start with that one, and I may skip over to the 1956, but I'll let you know ahead of time. Ali Pasha, Meheb, Mehmet Emin, from 1815 to 1871, September 6th, born Constantinople, Turkish statesman. He was trained to the diplomatic profession from boyhood, beginning as a clerk in the foreign office and being elevated from one position to another at home and abroad till 1844 when he became ambassador at London. The following year, he was appointed Minister of Foreign Affairs and thrice accepted that position. He was also Chancellor of the Devon, was made a Pasha 1846 and Grand Vizier 1852. He became identified with the cause of reform in Turkey. In the conferences at Vienna and Paris 1855, he represented Turkey and signed the Treaty of Paris of 1856 March 30th. He presided at the Conference of the Powers 1864 May for the purpose of settling the Romanian, excuse me, Romanian question. In 1867, he was appointed regent of the empire during the absence of the sultan. So let's take a look and compare him from the 1909 to the 1956 version. So I'm going to read from the Encyclopedia Americana 1956. Um, Ali Pasha, but it says Ali Mehmet, Turkish, Pasha and diplomat, born Constant Constantinople, 1815, died Aaron Coy, Asia Minor, September 6, 1871. The son of a public official, he became charge, charge de affaires at London in 1838, an ambassador to Great Britain from 1842 to 1845. He was made Chancellor of the Devon in 1845, and during the troublous years 1846 to 1852, he was thrice Minister of Foreign Affairs. For a short time in 1852, he was Grand Vizier, and subsequently, he held the office for four periods. With outbreak of the Crimean War in 1854, 
he was recalled as foreign minister and in March 1855 helped to negotiate the Treaty of the Four Guarantees. In July, he again became Grand Vizier and at the Treaty of Paris in 1856 showed great decision and cleverness in looking after Turkish interests, but without entire success. In November, his political tone forced him to resign, but he remained minister without portfolio and member of the Great Council. After Rashid Pasha's death in 1858, he was again Grand Vizier and soon again withdrawn, but in November 1861, he resumed the office of foreign minister. He was president of the Convention on Romanian Affairs, or excuse me, Romanian Affairs, Paris 1864, and member of the Black Sea Conference in London 1871. During the Sultan's absence at the Paris Exposition in 1867, he was regent, and while the very soul of the reform movement, he energetically suppressed the Cretan Rebellion and the movement for Egyptian independence. In the full tide of activity, he suddenly died, an excellent man and statesman who strove all his life, but with little success, to regenerate and modernize his country. So we we got a little more information in the Encyclopedia Americana in 1956 than we did in the New Imperial Encyclopedia and Dictionary of 1909. So I just wanted to to compare those two, <clears throat> and uh, I really liked the 1956 one of 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 explaining who he was. Uh, you get a sense that he was a, a really cool person, and he cared a lot about his people. <clears throat> yeah, so let's continue to Alst. That's spelled A-A-L-S-T. It's a town in Belgium. See, a lost. Next entry is Alten, which is A-A-L-T-E-N, which is a town in the Netherlands, province of Geller, Gelderland, 29 dot e of Arnhem, about 3 dot m from the German frontier, the new northwest boundary of Westphalia, population 7,000. So that's from 1909, 7,000 in 1909. The next in entry is R, which is A-A-R. Next to the Rhine and Rhone, largest river in Switzerland, rises in the glaciers near the Grimsel and Bern, forms the falls of Hendek, 200 feet high, flows through lakes, Brins, and Thun, and passing the towns of Interlake in Thun, Bern, Salir, Aru, Brug, and Klingnau, joins the Rhine a little above Waldschut and Baden after a course of nearly 200 miles. If you'll excuse me, I need to get some water. <clears throat> okay, the next entry is Aro, or Aro, which is A A R A U, which is a town in Switzerland, capital of the canton of Argo, on the R, 41 meters northeast of Bern, 63 meters west of Zurich. The tunnel of the Basel and Zurich Railway passes under the town. In 1798, Aru was the capital of the Helvetic Republic. It has manufactories, <clears throat> manufactories of ribbons, cotton, cloth, math, oh, mathematical instruments, leather, and vitrol, and a cannon foundry. Aru has an academy and library of a population of about 7,000. So... We have two towns in uh, the Netherlands and Switzerland with about 7,000 people in 1909. <clears throat> excuse me. Arufei Pasha. Or excuse me. Arifei Pasha. So that's A-A-R-I-F-I-P-A-S-H-A. -A -A. Tur Turkish statesman born... Constantinople, 1830, son of a noted diplomatist, Shikab Pasha. As a boy of 15 years, he received employment from the Divan, and two years later went to the Shikib Pasha to Rome, and subsequently to Vienna. Having become an expert linguist, he was appointed first secretary to the legation in Vienna, afterward first translator in Paris to the Sublime Porte and later first interpreter to the Devon. From this point, he rose to ambassador in Vienna, minister of public instruction, 
ambassador in Paris, and 1879 prime minister. He has held other important offices, and in 1893, he was a senator. Aardvark, or earth hog, sea anteater. We're going to go to the 1956 Encyclopedia Americana to get the definition of aardvark. Aardvark, Dutch earth pig, or a scatarapus, digger plus foot, a, noctur a nocturnal burrowing, insect-eating mammal of southeast and northeast Africa. It is the sole example of the order Tubulodidata. It is about five feet long, including the tail of sandy color, with sparse, short, bristly hair. The legs are powerful, the feet with blunt claws with which the animal digs its burrow and opens the hills of ants and termites on which it feeds. The head is elongate, the ears very large, the snout pig-like. The mouth is small, with a long, slimy, protrusible tongue adapted for licking up insects. Nearly every ant hill in the dry table land regions of the interior of Africa has a widely gaping mouth on its southern side, this point of attack being selected by the aardvark either because it is next to the habitation of the queen ant or because the structure is not baked quite so hard as where it is exposed to the full rays of the sun. There are two species, O. capensis in South Africa and O. Othiopicus in Northeast Africa. So back to the 1909, <clears throat> the New Imperial Encyclopedia and Dictionary. Ardwolf, C. protellus. Now we are going to go back to the Encyclopedia Americana, 1956, for Ardwolf. Dutch Earthwolf, a timid nocturnal South African carnivore, Protellus cristata, the only representative of the family Protellidae. It resembles the hyena, to which it is closely related, but it has less strength of jaw and teeth. Its fur is coarse, color ash gr ashy gray, irregularly striped with black, muzzle black and nearly naked, ears brown outside, gray within. It inhabits burrows and being unable to kill vertebrates, lives upon insects, larvae, and small carrion. Sounds pretty cool. It's an aardvark and aardwolf. We're going back to the New Imperial Encyclopedia and Dictionary from 1909. We've got Argau or Ar Argovi, a canton of Switzerland on the R and having the Rhine for its boundary. Its surface is diversified, well wooded, and generally fertile. Area about 530 square miles, population 1900 is 206,498, rather more than half being Protestants. Besides agriculture, there are considerable manufacturers of cotton and silk, and prosperity has of late markedly increased. In this canton is the castle of Habsburg, or Habsburg, original seat of the imperial family of Austria. The chief town is Arau, situated on the R, population about 7,000. R. Haus, which is spelled A A R H U U S. It's a seaport on the east coast of Jutland and seat of a bishop. Population 52,000. Aaron, elder brother of Moses, was appointed his assistant and spokesman, and at the giving of the Mosaic Law, received for himself and his descendants the hereditary dignity of the priesthood. Aaron assisted his brother in the administration of affairs. He died in the 123rd day of his age on Mount Hor, which is H-O-R, on the borders of Edemia, <clears throat> his third son, Elizar, succeeded him in the office of high priest. Arionic, or Arionical, of or pertaining to Aaron or, or his priesthood. Aaron's rod in, in archaeology, a rod with one serpent twining around it, as distinguished from Mercury's rod, which has two. Aaron's Serpent, a figure expressive of some combination or power so irresistible as to break down or swallow up all opposing interests or powers. Arsons. Franz Van. Okay, so this is a person. This is Franz Van Arsons. He was a diplomatist, 
from 1572 to 1641, born at the Hogue, son of Cornelius von Arsens, he was trained from his youth to diplomacy, was minister re resident of the States General 1598 in France and ambassador 1609. He was ambassador to Venus 1609 to 1615 and to England 1626 and again 1640 when he arranged the marriage of William II of Nassau and Mary, daughter of Charles I of England. He was accused of having instigated the death of Olden Barnevalt in 1619. Richelieu de deemed him one of the three ablest politicians of his time. Austin, Ivar Andreas. So, Ivar Andreas Austin. His last name is spelled A-A-S-E-N. He was a Norwegian phil philologist, <laughs> philologist born in 1813, August 5th. He was privately educated and in early life interested himself in botany, but afterward began in investigation of the different dialects used in Norway and published a grammar in 1848 and dictionary in 1850. He attempted to remodel the Norse language but was unsuccessful, though he was for a time supported by Bjorn Stern Bjornsson. He died in 1896. Osvar, a small group of islands off the coast of Norway near the Arctic Circle, important for their herring fisheries. During the herring run, which lasts three weeks from December 10th, as many as 10,000 Fishermen take 200,000 kegs of fish. For the rest of the year, the islands are uninhabited except by a few families. Ab, which is A-B. Hebrew name of the 11th month of the Jewish civil year and the 5th of the ecclesiastical year, including portions of July and August. That's pretty cool. I'm always interested in other calendars, uh, other cultural calendars. Uh, so that, that's pretty neat. So Ab is the Hebrew, na Hebrew name of the 11th month of the Jewish civil year and the 5th of the ecclesiastical year. Okay, so moving on. <clears throat> Ababda, or Ababde, or Ababdi, which is spelled, the first word is spelled A-B-A-B-D-E-H, which is a race of people occupying parts of Upper Egypt and Nubia. And as to the latter country, all parts between the Nile and the Red Sea, they are on good authority deemed of Hemetic origin and allied to the Bisharin or Bishari, are nomadic in their habits, residing mostly in the desert where they serve as guides for travelers, are followers of Islam, and possess camels, horses, sheep, and goats. They have no firearms, but use bows and arrows. I wonder if that's true today. If you know, let me know um, if, if you can find out. They are under the general control of the Khedive of Egypt, to whom they pay taxes. Their language is Arabic with traces of Hamitic. Abaka. The fiber of a species of plantain or banana, Musa troglodytarium, native of the Philippine Isles, where it is extens extensively cultivated. The leaf stalks are split into long strips and the fibrous part is then separated from the fleshy pulp. A laborer can in this way produce daily 50 pounds of hemp. Before 1825, the quantity produced was insignificant, but now it amounts to nearly 31,000 tons annually. In Manila, there is a steam rope work for making ropes of it for naval purposes. They are very durable, but not very flexible. The fiber of a number of species of musa is used in tropical countries see plantain well that's pretty cool i wonder if they still do that in manila so next word is a bok or a back on the back backwards as used by sailors towards the mast by surprise unexpectedly abaco see bahamas abacus Let's see accounting frame used in ancient and modern times for reckoning accounts and in primary schools for teaching the rudiments of arithmetic. Are abacuses still used in uh, elementary schools today? I remember playing with one, but I don't remember really using it. But if you know, let me know in the comments below. It consists of a frame with a number of parallel wires 
on which beads, ivory, and wood balls and other counters are strung. It is universally employed by the Chinese in making up their accounts. Abacus Pythagoricus meant the multiplication table as multiplying can be done on an abacus. The term is also applied to a logical machine devised to display mechanically the valid combinations of a number of logical terms. Abacus in archaic, in, uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry, abacus in archaeology, a square or oblong level tablet on the capital of a column and supporting the tablature. In the Doric, Old Ionic, and Tuscan orders, the abacus is a regular oblong, but in the New Ionic, Corinthian, and Roman orders, the abacus has concave sides with truncated angles. Square marble tablets lit into walls and filled with figures in them inserted in mosaic floors were also included under the term abacus in ancient architecture. Abaddon Hebrew Abad, to be lost or destroyed, the destroying angel of the bottomless pit. See Apollyon. Okay. I was just checking the... Ah, here we go. Yes, the 1956 Encyclopedia Americana has a little more to say about that. About, um, Abaddon. In the Old Testament and the rabbinical literature, Sheol, the underworld, or the place of the lost in it. In Revelation 9:11, the king of abyss, Greek Apollyon. So there, we got a little bit more out of the 1956 one. Abaft. B. Afton, by, behind, Afton, after, behind, bafta, the back, a seaman's term. At or towards the stern or Hinder part of a ship behind. Abasse, lowered in heraldry, when the fesse or any other armoral figure is depressed or situated below the center of the shield, it is said to be abasse. Adasse, back to black, back to back. Affronte or confronte, facing or fronting one another. Agasse, sharpened at the point. Ale, winged or other heraldic terms borrowed like abasse from the French and used by English heralds in senses not differing essentially from their ordinary significations in French. Okay, we'll go, uh, we'll do a couple more words. Abana and Farpar. They are rivers in Damascus. See 2 Kings verse 12. Abana is now known as the Berida flowing directly through the city. Farpar, as the Awaj, eight, I'm not sure that's meters or miles south, the two flow east to west across the plain of Damascus and are lost in marshes on the borders of the great Arabian desert. Abanke, town of Peru, farm of Cuzco, on the Abanke River, spanned here by one of the finest bridges in Peru. Abanke has large sugar refineries. Ooh, sugar uh, population 5,000. We're going to stop there, and uh, next time we'll go with Abancor, and we'll find out who that is, Abancor. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it, um, and sorry I was stumbling over some of the words, uh, but as we continue on, as I speak out loud, uh, maybe it'll get a little easier. And, uh, don't forget to like this video, comment, share with friends or families who might enjoy this challenge. I definitely appreciate you joining me on this journey of mine uh, in reading the entire encyclopedia set. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And uh, we'll, I'll see you on the next entry. Have a blessed day. And, and uh, don't forget to comment below um, anything you want to say about today's uh, encyclopedia readings or if you have a favorite word and uh, if you've read the encyclopedias already let me know what version you read and did you have fun with it uh, was it just boring or did you try to do it and you just put it down um, if you've seen my first video I tried reading the Amer uh, 
the Encyclopedia Americana and I got to page 80 in trying to read it in over a year. So that's why I decided to do this. So that way you can help keep me accountable to reading it. Um, but you're going to have a blessed day. And until next time, just we'll see you later.